Whoa, 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 what? Did you see that? Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, put on quite a show during its debut launch. With a mighty roar, the first ever integrated Starship rocket soared towards space today, on April 20th, no less, from SpaceX's Seaside Starbase facility at Boca Chica Beach here on South Texas's Gulf Coast at 9.33 a.m. EDT, 1.33 p.m. GMT, 8.33 a.m. local Texan time. It was a spectacular and surreal sight. The 120-meter Starship, the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, rose off Starbase's orbital launch mount atop a pillar of flame generated by its 33 first-stage Raptor engines. Starship kept climbing in defiance of its tremendous bulk, its shiny stainless steel body reflecting the Texas morning sun all the while. What a launch, seeing Starship head skywards, its 33 engines burning as it slowly pushed upwards into the blue Texan sky. It was quite something, and it did pass a key point, clearing the tower and not blowing up the launch pad infrastructure. So far, so good. But it was at the point where the booster tried to separate from the upper stage that things went wrong. The two vehicles remained connected and the stack began to tumble, ultimately exploding, or as they said, experiencing a rapid unscheduled disassembly, a term that is now commonly used for explosions, which is what SpaceX experienced today. And it all happened just under four minutes after launch. As if the flight test was not exciting enough, Starship experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly before stage separation, the company tweeted. SpaceX called this a rapid unscheduled disassembly, but even though the company wanted this test to go further, they won't call this a failure. There were still cheers at SpaceX's HQ even when the rocket went up in smoke. The giant vehicle reached a maximum altitude of about 24 miles or 39 kilometers, according to the data on SpaceX's launch webcast. To get this far is amazing, SpaceX's Kate Tice said during the webcast. Everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. The fact that the rocket got off the ground is a start. They'll assess what went right and what went wrong, and then have another go. It was SpaceX's second attempt to launch Starship. An initial try on April 17th ended in a scrub due to a frozen valve. The flight plan today called for Super Heavy to come back to Earth in the Gulf of Mexico roughly eight minutes into the flight. The upper stage, meanwhile, was supposed to fire up its six Raptors to head up to the final frontier and a planned partial trip around our planet. The goal was to get Starship to a maximum altitude of about 145 miles or 233 kilometers, then bring it barreling back into Earth's atmosphere for a trial by fire re-entry, ending with a hard splashdown in the Pacific Ocean not far from the Hawaiian island of Kauai about 90 minutes after liftoff. SpaceX wasn't expecting everything to work out, however. New rockets often fail on their first flight test, and Starship is far bolder and more complex than most launchers. It has 33 first-stage engines and stands nearly 400 feet tall, after all. Rather, today was all about gathering data and responding properly to whatever ended up happening. Company representatives stressed, With a test such as this, success is measured by how much we can learn, which will inform and improve the probability of success in the future as SpaceX rapidly advances development of Starship, the company wrote in a pre-launch description of today's mission. Congrats, SpaceX team, on an exciting test launch of Starship. Learned a lot for the next test launch in a few months, Musk tweeted. This will definitely be a big memory for me. Hundreds of onlookers cheered along the beach here as they watched the giant rocket lift off. A day earlier, many of them actually got a close look at Starship by driving out to Boca Chica Beach along an access road that runs alongside the launch pad. There, they stood on sand dunes and marveled at the towering rocket. Some cooked hot dogs on grills in the warm spring evening. It's just going to be kind of amazing just to see what happens. Shannon Holbert shared while observing Starship on its pad from the dunes of Boca Chica Beach. I love the quest that the SpaceX team has, the idea of going to Mars and making us multi-planetary. Holbert, the CEO of cloud computing company Opus Interactive, drove to South Texas from Houston to watch the launch. Other spectators came from farther locales, Mississippi and Alabama in the US, Toronto in Canada, and more, just to glimpse the first of its kind launch. Chad Whitney, a 51-year-old software engineer from Waveland, Mississippi, drove his family across nearly 740 miles, or 1,190 kilometers in their rocket van to watch the Starship launch, 
he and his 15 year old son Jack are chronicling the trip with their Rocket Band YouTube channel and were joined by Whitney's wife Amanda and their 18 year old daughter Maggie. Jack wants to be an engineer and what you see behind us is the finest engineering. It just doesn't get better than that, Whitney told Space.com of Starship. The Whitney's arrived in South Texas before SpaceX's first launch attempt on Monday and watched engineers stack the massive Starship spacecraft atop its super heavy booster. The view was awesome, the Whitney's said, and inspiring for kids like Jack who hope to build a better tomorrow. I aspire to be an aerospace engineer, you know, and building that thing behind us, Jack said. SpaceX had launched a handful of test flights from Starbase before today, but those previous efforts were a different breed. They got nowhere near space, involved only upper stage spacecraft without a super heavy attached and featured a maximum of three Raptor engines. And it had been a while since we'd seen one of these flights. A Starship prototype last launched in May of 2021, sticking its landing after soaring about six miles or 10 kilometers into the South Texas sky. Ever since that three engine success, SpaceX has been gearing up for the next big step in the Starship test program, the first space launch, which would feature an integrated Starship super heavy stack for the first time. And that's what we saw today. The relatively long lead up to today's test flight wasn't attributable merely to the challenges of technological development. There were regulatory hurdles as well. For example, the US Federal Aviation Administration or the FAA reviewed SpaceX's application for a Starship near-orbital launch license for more than 500 days before finally granting it on Friday, April 14th. Now, we should expect SpaceX to fly Starship again relatively soon. The company has multiple Starship vehicles in production at Starbase, and the plan is to fly them pretty much as soon as they're ready. That's in keeping with Musk's philosophy, which prioritizes the advances gained from flight tests, even, or perhaps especially, those that fail. If the test campaign goes well, people could climb aboard Starship for the first time just a few short years from now. NASA selected Starship to be the first crewed lander for its Artemis Moon program, for example. The SpaceX vehicle will put astronauts down near the lunar south pole on the Artemis 3 mission, which is targeted to launch in 2025 or thereabouts. SpaceX has already sold two two private around-the-moon Starship missions as well. One was booked by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa, who will fly with a crew of eight artists and influencers. Dennis Tito, who paid his own way to the International Space Station back in 2001, will fly on the other Starship Moon mission along with his wife Akiko, and other passengers whose identities have not yet been disclosed. Target launch dates for those two private moon missions have not yet been announced, but they and all of Starship's other envisioned future flights are a little closer to reality now that the huge vehicle has actually gotten off the ground. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special update from Great SpaceX. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you very soon.